Hey, hey friends, it's Cory from Hey Let's Make Stuff, and today we are going to be etching tumblers without a laser. Instead of the laser, we're gonna be using the Citrus Strip Stripping Gel, and it basically pulls up the powder coating off the tumbler. This has been a super popular craft in a lot of the Cricut crafting groups I've seen, and I wanted to give it a shot. So I wanted to give Leap of Faith Crafting Designs a little shout out since she has a basic tutorial. Um, and then from there, I worked to come up with a process so you can make much more intricate designs as well as make that cleaning process at the end easier. So if you're ready to get started, let's get going. To make this project, you're going to need a powder coated water bottle. So I got this one off Amazon and I'm actually really happy with the results. I will link to this particular uh, water bottle in the, com or in the description below. So you want one that has a fairly smooth finish. If it has kind of that rough pebbled finish, that's all places where the citrus strip can work its way under your uh, stencil and mess up your crisp edges. So a smooth surface as well as straight sides. You can do a curved tumbler, but it's a little bit more advanced. And anytime you have that kind of curved edge, it can create puckering or other issues with your vinyl. And that's just more places for that citrus strip to work its way under the stencil and create um, you know, rough edges around it. So especially if you're starting out, I recommend trying to find the smoothest tumbler as well as straight sides. There are a handful of tumblers that people have said don't actually strip. Um, I haven't found that in any of my tests. Um, this water bottle worked really well, so I'm definitely gonna re recommend this one. Next, you're going to need citrus strip stripping gel. So there's also a varnish remover, don't get that one, but the stripping gel is what's going to actually remove the powder coating from this tumbler, leaving the stainless steel um, visible underneath. Um, I got this on Amazon, but your local home improvement store should have it as well. For your stripping gel, you're gonna wanna use a glass bowl. Um, you don't want anything that has a coating of its own because it's a, stri a stripping gel and it will strip the finish off whatever bowl you're going to use. So I highly recommend glass. And then you're also going to want a decent sized paintbrush. You can use a foam brush, um, but I prefer the paintbrush. For your stencil, you're going to cut that on your Cricut Silhouette or other cutting machine. So basically, instead of weeding around the image like you normally would, you want to weed the image itself. This creates a stencil. So if we put it on here, We'll put the stripping gel on top of it and it will strip off the snake leaving that design. When you put, go to cut out your image, you may want to move it down on the mat just a little bit so you have a little bit of extra space around the edges. You're also going to need a piece of transfer tape that's slightly larger than your decal. You're going to need uh, painter's tape because you'll tape the rest of your water bottle around so you don't get the sister strip anywhere it shouldn't be. You're going to want um, a cotton ball and some isopropyl alcohol so that you can clean your tumbler and give it the best surface for starting your project. I've actually already done that, so don't skip that step. Um, you're gonna want a little bit of PPE here. You're gonna want some gloves because you don't wanna get that citrus strip on your hands. Um, and then if you'd like, you can wear some safety goggles as well. And then you're gonna need some sort of cradle for your water bottle. So let me move these things over here just a little bit so you can actually see what I've made here. I don't have a tumbler cradle. Um, it's something that you can buy that actually just basically makes sure that your water bottle doesn't roll back and forth while you're working on it. So instead, I've used my Cricut roll holder, um, which, actually, which works really well. So I put a layer of saran wrap underneath, so just in case the stripping gel leaks through, it won't ruin my roll holder here. And then I've got two layers of paper towels. So when I put my water bottle here, I can now work on it without it rolling all over the place. You know, so if you have this, it's actually handy for more than one reason. Um, I found this works really well, or you can use a cradle, or you can sort of, you know, put together some, something that will hold your project straight. That's basically what you need. And then finally, you're going to need a washcloth. So I tried a bunch of different ways to clean the water bottle at the end, and I'll share more about that later. But in the end, I found that an old <laughs> washcloth worked the best. You want something that's kind of rough, um, and you want something, like you don't want like a nice plush uh, washcloth. These are um, those really cheap washcloths from Target, and this right here was the key to making the cleaning process a lot easier. All right, so those are our supplies, and let's get crafting. So the first step in this process is to apply the decal to our water bottle. We're gonna start by putting our transfer tape on the decal itself. So I found that just using a weeding hook is a good way to get the edge of this uh, transfer tape up. That. Transfer tape up. So now you have your transfer tape without its backing and you can put it on your image. Um, because this is a decent sized image, I usually fold it in half and start in the center and then sort of work my way to both sides. So you can see here, I did not put that on very straight, but it works really well. Um, actually, one other thing you need is a scraper. So you can get this on here really good. Go ahead, 
burnish it from both sides. I find that it's get it harder to get it to stick to the transfer tape. Pretty easy to get it to stick to the water bottle, so I'd rather get it really stuck here on the transfer tape. There we go. You can peel back the surface here. So this is the backing paper that used to be on the vinyl, and now that piece of vinyl is on the transfer tape. So the next step is to put your transfer onto your water bottle. I've got my, trans or my transfer tape on here very crooked, so I'm just gonna eyeball it. Hopefully it will look pretty good. But again, to start, I usually try and press down that center first. Press down the center first and then work my way to the edges like this. There we go, that looks pretty good. So you wanna press it down with your fingers, making sure that there's no air bubbles. Um, we're a little tall on the top here, but I think that's gonna be okay. So I'm pressing it down really well with my fingers. I don't recommend using a burnishing tool like this because sometimes you can just clip the edges of the vinyl using this and it can ruin your whole image. I've done it before. So at this point, I just prefer a good old fashioned thumbs to get everything on here perfectly. So once you have your image pressed down, then you can go ahead and peel back this transfer tape. Um, hopefully it should peel back pretty easily. You'll be leaving your whole image on the water bottle. One thing I forgot to mention in the supplies is that you may want to use a hair dryer. So I'm actually going to take this into my bathroom and I'm going to blast this with a decent amount of heat. And I'm going to, again, use my thumbs to really press all of this vinyl into the water bottle. I find that the heating up that adhesive a little bit allows it to adhere even more, which is what you want because you don't want any of that citrus strip to get underneath your stencil. So I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. Okay, so I blasted it with a blow dryer for probably 30 seconds and then I'm just really pressing down, especially those small bits and curved bits, um, because you don't want any of that citrus strip to get under your stencil, like I said. So, looks like we're ready to go. So the next thing we need to do is add um, this frog tape or painter's tape all around your, um, all around your tumbler where you don't want that citrus strip. Um, this stuff does, it goes on pretty loopy, but then it does start to run. Um, and the last thing you want is like, you know, you have your stencil and you've got like this drippy bit. <laughs> so cover all of the parts of your, um, all of the parts of your tumbler with painter's tape that you don't want to get citrus stripped. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. It really is very simple and I'll be back in a minute. I have covered this whole water bottle with that painter's tape. Um, I want to make sure to press down extra well around the edges of the stencil because that would be where the drips would be most likely, so make sure you really press those down. Next you're going to want to take your cradle, whether you have one or you packed together one like I have, and place your water bottle face up in the cradle. So the next step here is to add the citrus strip. So it's very gloopy. I don't... I feel like almost like melted cheese. I don't, I don't know, it gets kind of stringy. So you can put like just a big kind of glob into your um, thing. If there's extra, you can just put it right back in the container. All right, so I have my gloves, put on my safety glasses here as well. Now you'll want to use this to paint, um, you know, paint the citrus strip on your image. Don't brush it. <laughs> I think that that is one of the keys here for getting it to have those nice crisp edges. So basically, Kind of gloop it on there. Um, you can see how stringy it is. It makes me reminds me of eating like a grilled cheese sandwich. So and then I just dab it on. It co goes on very thick, but it will start to run off after a while. So just dab it on here and try and cover up all of the image that you've got here. You can see that I'm sort of dabbing it on, I'm not painting it on really. Again, I think that that really does help with the, keeping those edges really crisp. All right. So you can see already at the top how it's starting to level out a little bit. So it'll start to run. So you don't have to get every inch perfect, just make sure it's all covered and then it'll sort of flatten itself out and level as it starts to run down the sides. Again, that's why I protected my um, roll holder with the saran wrap because I didn't want it to get on there. All right, so that looks pretty good to me. 
This is going to sit for about 60 to 90 minutes. I found 90 works really well for this particular water bottle, so I'm going to let it go that full 90 minutes. I know there's a hack from Mr. Crafty Pants that if you put a piece of tin foil over it and then hit it with a heat gun, you can speed that process up and just it can be done in minutes, but I don't have a heat gun, so we're going to wait. Um, and then once it's all done setting, it's sort of eating away at that powder coating. Um, once it's done, we will wash everything off and we will get to finishing up our tumbler. One more thing, you want to make sure to rinse this out really well in a sink. Um, I would even say if you have it, rinse it out in a utility sink. This is, again, a stripping gel, so if you leave any of it in your sink, maybe you have a powder coated sink, maybe this could strip it, I don't know. But you want to make sure to strip it both out of, or you want to make sure to rinse it both out of your bowl, out of your sink, and out of your brush right away. The water bottle has been sitting for 90 minutes, and you can see here that it has um, really leveled out and covered the entire design, which is exactly what we want. There's no parts here that look like they haven't been covered, so I think this is actually going to be pretty good. Before you rinse all of this off, take your weeding hook and go ahead and poke in there and see if you can start to pull up some of that um, powder coating. And it does look here like it's going to come up just fine. I'm going to take this over to my sink and I'm going to wash off the citrus strip as well as take off all the tape and the decal. Um, that will leave us with just the tumbler with the etched design, but we're going to have to clean off that powder coating because it doesn't rinse off super easily. So I've got a tip for that and uh, yeah, so I'll be right back once I have rinsed all of this off. I've removed the tape and the vinyl from my water bottle here. And I know it's very hard to tell on video, but you can actually see where the image of the snake is. When I did this the first time, I had a really difficult time cleaning up this powder coating that's still on here. It stuck to the edges and I was very frustrated. I have um, very painful joints in my hands sometimes and I was trying to use a wet washcloth and then I tried to use steel wool, I tried to use a pumice hand cleaner, I tried to use paper towel, and it just took a lot of elbow grease. I was able to do it, but by the end I was like, do I even want to make another one of these tumblers? So on the second one that I made, I tried a couple different methods, um, but the one that ended up working the best for me was using a dry uh, washcloth, especially kind of one that's rough and, you know, it's a little bit old. So to start though, you can actually use your weeding hook to just kind of bring up little bits here. So if you do this, you can just kind of get this started. Now this is the most intricate design I've ever done, so I'm kind of interested to see how well those uh, parts that I had the vinyl over did. But if you just kind of loosen this up, that means that when you go to put the washcloth on it, it will um, sort of rub against itself like an eraser um, and pull everything up fairly nicely. So you can see here that I just used my weeding hook to pull up these little bits where I can see the design is coming up. You don't want to pull too hard because you don't want to pull up any of the powder coating that wasn't. But if you take your washcloth and then you just start to rub, it will start to pull up your design. And it still does require some elbow grease, but not nearly as much as some of the other methods. A lot of the tutorials for this technique out there say that you can't do super small pieces, but I'm finding that this is a pretty delicate image and it's done very nicely here. I think the key is having that flat surface um, and then using that blow dryer to um, to really adhere the vinyl. All right, I'm gonna finish this up and we'll ch check out our final water bottle in just a moment. I have finished cleaning up this tumbler and I have to say, I am absolutely thrilled with how this turned out. This is a pretty intricate design and it all etched absolutely perfect, perfectly. So the citrus strip is amazing and I think this is a craft that you should try. If you enjoyed this craft, I would love for you to hit like, subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them in the comments and I will see you next time.